All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. It is, it is the Earthmaster here on this end. Wednesday night, February 28th, 2024. Not the last day of February. we got one more day left. Leap year. Uh, latest activity shows... Uh, let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like a 1.5 and also uh, 3.6 out here into the Pacific just off the Blanco Fracture Zone. Not showing up here on the USGS map yet. So we did have a little bit of activity stirring up here since uh, the update this morning. Uh, getting some activity stirred up out here in the Atlantic. I said to watch for this, right? Uh, areas uh, along the Erectness Ridge. Seeing some movement down here with a 4.7. Uh, that should intensify here over the next hour, next couple hours here, or next maybe even the next day or so. Uh, in Increasing activity there across the uh, Grindavik area. Got to watch that pretty closely because we have been seeing... Uh, you know, some elevated earthquake activity out here and uh, still likely uh, eruption taking place out here soon around the Grindavik region. Not a whole lot right now, but we're continuing to watch that uh, considering that we did see some activity stirring up out here uh, with that 4.7. And if you look way up north here, look at this 5.1. What is going on up there in the North Pole? That is crazy looking. So this is what I was talking about to, to look for, right? Movement up here. I know it's well north of the Atlantic, but uh, still along the plate boundary up here. Got to watch that. Uh, keep an eye here on Iceland. That's uh, definitely an odd earthquake. Way up there, we don't really see too much earthquake activity. In fact, if you look up here, we can't, can't even really see it on the USGS map. And it won't even let me click on it. But uh, fortunately, we have a, a round globe here. So 5.1 coming in uh, within the last couple hours here in that region. So 3.6 out here in the Blanco Fracture Zone. A handful of earthquake activity out here as well. USGS just picking up on it. There we go. Uh, in the Gorda Escarpment area. This is a divergent zone. And this zone right here, basically spreading seafloor center. When this happens, things get elevated out here across the Northern California area. So keep an eye on the Northern California region. I want to see what we got for tremor activity here real quick. Uh, we got about, well, not bad. Pretty decent uptick here. 308 epicenters of tremor in the Northern California. That's a decent amount, not a huge amount. Uh, nothing that I would call, uh, you know, extreme tremor. But uh, definitely see some activity out here in the deeper regions of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, we'll continue to watch that here, Northern California, for some further subsequent movement. Uh, activity out there in the Northern Nevada kind of cal uh, calmed down there since uh, this morning. Uh, a handful of earthquakes out here in uh, the Bryan area of California. You guys know what's out here? Well, the Discovery Bay. Now, they've, they've made a little adjustment here to the... Um, location earlier this was directly underneath the discovery bay area but looks like they've revised it and put it back over here to the west i looked up a couple different fault systems here the one that it looks like it's the closest to is the great valley thrust fault that runs here along the west side of the san, san joaquin valley and of course extends up here in the sacramento valley so that's about the closest one that i could see that it was located on uh, the USGS map not showing really anything on here, but uh, yeah, that 3.5 uh, was felt uh, over the area from about, uh, well, it looks like San Francisco in the Stockton area, even up in the Sacramento. So uh, a little bit of activity here along the West Coast to watch here. Uh, a little bit of further movement there on the Hayward Fault and a handful of earthquakes here across the Vallejo area. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye here on the West Coast. Things seem to be kicking up here slightly. Uh, a little bit of movement here around the San Bernardino Mountains. A couple smaller quakes and some along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, backing out of here. See what else we got here across the area. A little bit of movement across Idaho. Not a whole lot going on in Yellowstone for now. Texas and Oklahoma. Well, Texas got some activity. Oklahoma pretty quiet today. Uh, one little earthquake over here across the North Carolina region. Uh, a little small, a little very small microquake. Uh, aside from that, let's see what else we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. As uh, far as newer activity goes, uh, getting a decent swarm going on here off the coast of Japan. Look at that. Quite a few fours and even a five out here in the area uh, just outside of Tokyo. This is uh, somewhat into the Japan Trench. Um, 
Yeah, a couple fours and fives stirring up right here in this specific area. So I'm going to watch that over here around the Philippines area as well. Getting a huge cluster of movement down in New Zealand. Still watching New Zealand here. They've been moving quite a bit here in, in the deeper regions. Uh, let's see what we got down here. There's two deep earthquakes today. One, uh, the 4.5 Vanuatu area, 607, uh, 611 kilometers deep. And then that was followed up here by uh, some further deeper active, uh, well, not deeper, but further deep movement in the Fiji area. So get ready. I think things are about ready to kick up here in terms of larger scale movement around this area. There's the activity in New Zealand. Underneath New Zealand, quite a of these earthquakes uh, into the Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, quite a few threes and some other smaller quakes in there as well. So uh, definitely keep an eye on the New Zealand area and the deeper movement there. A little on the concerning side. Uh, far as the rest of the area, looks like a little bit of movement down here in Zambia area. 4.8, that coming in earlier this evening. My time, local time here. Uh, that looks like it's just outside the rift zone here. Continental rift zone. Um, showing up there on the globe, you can see that. A little bit of movement here uh, prior to that with that 4.9. So things are getting, uh, you know, they're definitely getting active out here. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean has been quiet, but it's starting to kick up here in the last couple hours. Again, keep an eye on Iceland overnight. This thing could kick up very, very quickly. All right, space weather activity. See what's going on here uh, in the space weather department. There's our sea flare. Well, it was an M flare activity event. Uh, kind of a long duration M flare event. Looks like it did harbor a CME. Notice that drawn out uh, layer there. Um, let's see here. 3590. Gosh darn it. A, uh, a def definitely a very active sunspot region this solar cycle here with uh, that 6.3, that X 6.3 flare. The strongest solar, uh, strongest flare of the solar cycle 25 here that we're in. Uh, that is about ready here to drift off out of sight here from the northwestern limb as it continues to rotate uh, within that direction. We are left with, uh, well, I did have my hopes up here for this sunspot. We're noticing a separation here, though. This is separating the core. Not likely that we're going to see anything from this area or even this region. So we'll have to watch, see what comes around the eastern limb. We do have uh, at least one active region here, a former sunspot. 35, well, the former old sunspot 3576 there on the far side that will be rotating into view here of the earth facing side very soon. We'll see what else, uh, you know, maybe it might have uh, in store for us. Right now, not a whole lot in terms of the auroras. So things are very, very quiet out there right now. Not a, not a whole lot, unfortunately. I wish I could say that we're looking at some uh, major auroras here in the forecast, but that's just not the case. So over the next couple days, generalized thunderstorm activity. A little bit here across the west coast as well. We are looking at a pretty decent low pressure system coming down. Ah, tropical tidbits look like they are offline again. Goodness. That's all right. Uh, let's see here. Bring this up. Wind gusts. Our, <clears throat> our low pressure system up here, you can kind of see it spinning. There uh, in the Gulf of Alaska, that's going to bring some much colder air down into the area of the West Coast. Notice that deepening low pressure center right here. And uh, we're expecting quite a bit of snow up here across the California area. Let me show you guys uh, some of this rainfall accumulation and whatnot. Unfortunately, look at this rain shadow right here. Right? This is the typical rain shadow that we see here in the Sacramento Valley when storms come down out of the Northwest like that. They do have moisture, and there's a lot of cold air and instability, but that uh, these mountain ranges out here drain the precipitation out. So look at this difference here. Say we could have about four and a half inches here in the mountain ranges uh, in the Sacramento Valley. We got not even an inch of rain. So this is a major rain shadow that uh, is likely uh, going to persist there with the next couple storms, unfortunately. But... Uh, snowfall accumulation. We're talking about massive amounts of snowfall, well above three, six feet or so, probably 10 feet or more up here across the Sierra Nevada and the coast range as well. Uh, when you tack on the next 10 days, that only increases. So we're looking at a recharge here of the, um, 
well, the snowpack up there, and that's good news. Uh, potential snowfall up here across the northern end of the Sacramento Valley around Redding and Anderson. They do get snow, it seems like, maybe every other year. Uh, it's a possibility with these colder systems that are coming in, so we'll continue to watch that. Either way, a lot of, a lot of colder air coming in. Um, here's our rainfall. All right, well, let's see here. What else is there to chat about? A um, little bit of earthquake activity, Japan, Petrolia. So that earthquake right here, that doesn't look like the three-pointer because this was just uh, in the last couple minutes. And that three-pointer here, let me go back. Oh, by the way, I was looking at this uh, on the Google Earth map here uh, where the earthquake struck there in Discovery Bay. I've heard of it. I, I always thought it was like a, a theme park or something, but it's not. It's a, uh, it looks like, um, some very fancy houses and everyone has a boat. This is kind of like a rich island area. Um, goodness. <laughs> this is kind of like a, uh, a cheat, a cheat code, you know, on like the Sims or some other type of, uh, a game that you would play where everyone is rich, right? Everyone drives a fancy car and has a nice boat out there to cruise around their lake. But uh, yeah, uh, either way, the earthquake activity occurring away from there now. Uh, and again, there's a fault system that goes up along the uh, western side of the San Joaquin Valley. Um, let me go back here and double check. Uh, what was I going to double check? Oh yeah, the uh, earthquake um, earthquake map here. So yeah, so we did have a 3.6, right? But that has been over almost half an hour ago. So, but I am still seeing some earthquake activity here on the Petrolia station. So this movement here, this divergent zone, already putting the strain out here across this area. Uh, we're already seeing a little bit of earthquake activity showing up on the seismograph station there. Uh, now I know the USGS not reporting any earthquakes there, but obviously it is showing up here on the seismograph. So we'll keep an eye on it. Um, that zone out there, let's see, I think I still have it set up here. Again, is a, uh, a divergent zone out here. There's a couple different segments here that are uh, divergent spreading seafloor center, right? So you can see uh, some of the newer seafloor in the red, right? That's going to be uh, within the last zero to 10 million years or so. And of course it gets older as you get out here into the Pacific, but uh, spreading seafloor center and uh, down here across the uh, Southeastern Pacific as well. A lot of divergent zones creating new land, new oceanic crust out there. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Um, I think that's about it. I'm ready for bed. I'm going to call it. I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. Stay safe out there.